Let's change Linux today. And I say Linux because at the end of the day, most people switch distros or, or install this, this, and this because they're looking to game or they're looking for work productivity or looking for all these different things and going, oh, well, maybe this distribution has it. And a lot of this stems from the desktop environment. And many people go, well, you can't really install multiple desktop environments. And I'm like, no, you can. I personally, at my work, have had Vanilla Arch going for more than a year. And I've installed seven different desktop environments. Not all at the same time, mind you. Because there's some things you need to know about switching desktop environments without reinstalling everything. And then also, uh, I wanted to go over what makes that up and how you can do that. Because I think it's really important to understand it. Instead of distro hopping and installing all these different things, because I don't do distro reviews because I think distro hopping is silly. I think it's for just a lack of knowledge out on the marketplace. And that's why I don't really care about distributions that much. I think uh, most people distro hop just because they're looking for something that they can already get with their current distribution. So uh, with that said, to, in my mind, there's only two distributions I would ever even consider to do as my daily driver. And that's Vanilla Debian, which is the granddaddy and mo what most of everything's based off of. I'm looking at Ubuntu and all those derivatives. And then you have Vanilla Arch, which, you know, is a pain to install, but everything's kind of based off it on the Arch side of things that you want all the, every package ever installed and you want to be on the bleeding edge. Arch is usually where you're at. So if you're looking for stability, reliability, a little older packages, you're usually on Debian or a Debian-based distribution. And if on Arch... You're looking for that bleeding edge, that new hotness, that uh, everything that's brand new is usually on Arch. But both of them typically have a huge array of packages and you can install anything you ever dreamed of installing and you can make Linux look amazing and make it look basically however you want to make it look. So this video wants to go over that, making it look and feel the way you want it to. Because when it comes to desktop environments, I've said, hey, Look at all these different desktop environments. Now, normally I would roll my intro here, but I want to show you the desktop environments in the next 20 seconds. You have KDE, you have GNOME, you have XFCE, you have LXQT, you have Mate or Mate, you have a whole bunch of different ones out there depending on your needs. Those are the big ones I really want to cover in today's video because... Those are the ones that I consider as a serious contender. You also have window managers, which kind of is what I use here. You have Awesome and i3 and uh, Qtile and a whole bunch of other ones out there, but those don't really have any uh, settings and uh, not really a complete desktop experience for the end user. So uh, for this video, I'm gonna touch a little bit at the end of this video about those window managers, but really it's more about the desktop experience and the desktop environments that are out there and how to really switch between them. So let's go over some golden rules when you're doing uh, desktop switches and that way you have a better understanding of what really goes into it. First off, when you're choosing a distribution, I said at the beginning of the video, Archer Debian. Two di distributions in my mind are literally all that you really should use. Why is that? Well, because when you use Ubuntu or you use any of these other distributions, they typically customize Linux in such a way that you can't really uninstall the desktop environment that comes with it. There's some caveats to here, but in general practice, it's a bad idea. A lot of times things get messed up because they get baked into the actual core of the distribution. Where when you run a vanilla Debian or a vanilla Arch, well, First and foremost, it's more of a server install. And that server install, then you add the desktop environment on top of it. And that means you can easily switch and swap uh, back and forth. I say easily, but it definitely is a little more to it than that. But that's why I say Debian or Arch is really what you should be using. So the first thing there is when you're choosing that distribution... Uh, I think you should choose one of those two if you're really serious about using Linux as a, a daily driver. As many of the other ones are great for, let's say, my mother-in-law. I'd recommend using just a, a vanilla like Linux Mint or Pop! OS. That's great. Or maybe for my, my brother-in-law, which is a big gamer, uh, I would say maybe Pop! OS because it just kind of has all those settings baked in. But if you're really interested in Linux desktop and you're an advanced or power user, really, I think... 
you have to use either Vanilla Debian or Arch. I say have to because you're going to want to tinker with the look and feel of Linux. You're going to really want to dive deep. And when you're switching between a whole bunch of desktop environments, it's a heck of a lot easier instead of switching distributions just to uninstall a couple packages and install a couple more. And that's as easy it is to switch desktop environments. So uh, let's get into that. Here we go. So we're going to go Plasma. Old KDE. Look at that. Let's purge a whole bunch of stuff, right? So this is going to remove pretty much all of Mate. So there's two things with the desktop environment. And now that you have your vanilla basic install that's rock solid and you know you can swap between a whole bunch of different desktop environments instead of just tacking on more on top of it. You have the pull kits, and these are basically an authentication server that runs in the background. So let's say you launch Google and it has like a key ring of your saved passwords. It needs this authentication service running. And every single desktop environment has what's called a graphic authentication agent. And these are called policy kits or, or pull kits for short. And every one of them has pretty much their own independent agent that runs in the background. So let's say... You're on GNOME, it's GNOME pull kit. Or let's say you're on KDE, it's going to be its own KDE pull kit or mate and, and so on and so forth. Almost all of them have their own uh, policy kits. And if they don't, they borrow and use a package from one of these uh, other desktop environments. So you need that pull kit. And that's why you can't really install like four or five desktop environments all at the same time on one system because you're going to have all this you know, uh, all these pull, pull kits fighting over each other and it causes authentication errors and other things. And that's bad. That's why when you go to install another desktop environment, you should reboot your computer and then boot directly into it and then uninstall that old one. There's another setting in here too that is kind of dependent and it's called settings daemons. And these settings daemons are, well, they control like the, the little things like brightness or maybe... Uh, the theming of your actual desktop environment. All these other things that kind of go into the look and feel of the environment is held in the settings daemon. And every one of them has their own settings daemon. So between the pull kit and the settings daemon, that really can cause a lot of overlap when installing multiple desktop environments. So you need to be cautious or at least cognizant of this. So that's when we get into window managers. And window managers typically get put on top of an existing desktop environment, kind of as a base to say, hey, I want to use this guy's pull kit. And some of them don't even use the settings name and everything's just set manual uh, for a lot of the advanced users, but some of them, uh, they will even use the settings daemon. daemon. So uh, for me, I just use the pull kits, but my current desktop right here is awesome window manager. It uses mate uh, desktop environment as it's based. And mate uses the mate pull kit and it also uses the mate settings daemon. Now the settings daemon, I found that it didn't really work that well with it. So I didn't use that. I set everything manually. And now there's certain things that happen with that. So the settings daemon, it usually would run all the way in the background, but there's some desktop environments that don't need settings daemons or, or can just manually set those settings for you, such as LXQT or LXDE. They actually don't use a settings daemon in the background and that's why a lot of window managers will use it as a base or at least use some of its packages to set, let's say, its appearance, uh, such as your icons and your theme. Uh, like LX Appearance is probably one of the biggest packages for many Windows managers out there. So having said that, I did on live stream here, I have a mate with awesome window manager and I was like, you know what, let's switch over to KDE, which has a different pull kit and it has a different settings daemon. So I installed Plasma dash desktop. And then from Plasma dash desktop getting installed, I went ahead and rebooted the PC, booted into KDE, and then I literally removed mate desktop from the system. And from here, I could actually do everything in KDE. And then uh, I wanted to modify the actual desktop environment further. And I actually ripped out and stopped using its window manager, which was a little component of that desktop environment and decided to put i3 in there just to say, hey, I did it. And I did, and it was a, a decent experience. I still wouldn't recommend it. That's why I haven't made a video about it. But I just wanted to really kind of dive deep with this as far as 
switching the desktop environment, this would be an example of switching it. Now, if you want to go from KDE to GNOME, you could install GNOME, reboot, move right into GNOME, and then probably strip out all those KDE packages just so you don't have this overlapping services between the pull kits and setting daemon. Now, I've also had Tragedy Strike on stream as well. So I remember I had Fedora KDE Spin installed on this Studio PC. And I decided to go ahead and install a bunch of different desktop environments. I would install a different one. And then I went back and uninstalled KDE, which was what the distro was based off of. When I did that, it completely broke my authentication. I literally would just auto log in no matter where I was and no password was ever stored. So it was obviously causing all kinds of issues and I ended up having to format this system because of doing that. So this is an example of what not to do. And that's why I'm always like, just use vanilla Debian or Arch because I don't want you running into this if you swap out of that desktop environment and uninstall it, what that distro was based on. Because many times uh, if you install it from a server level and then upgrade to an actual desktop, this is actually a good way to be able to dis desktop swap without having to reinstall a new distro or reinstall your operating system. And that's super important. That's why I think this is kind of powerful. Now, this was kind of a high level overview of desktop environments, but it's something I kind of wanted to at least try and touch base with so you could have a better understanding of how Linux is constructed. And once you understand how Linux is constructed, I think you'll stop getting confused with the hundreds of different distro distros out there and just say, you know what, forget all that. I don't need to install Ubuntu and all these other derivatives. Yes, they look nice out of the box, but I want to make Linux look and operate the way I want. And this is like the foundation for that. Understanding your desktop environment and understanding how Linux processes things between how it looks, how it feels, how the windows operate, if you want tiling, if you want floating, all these different options, well, you have that ability, and this is kind of like the foundation that you need to really have a grasp of what to do in Linux. So with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.